so very good morning to all of you let's start with this experiment this is an experiment which is on reverberation time we are going to learn about what is reverberation time what is its importance and how do we perform this experiment observations and results so that is how we have planned today's discussion so going ahead firstly let's think about the theory part now this part talks about propagation of sound especially propagation of sound indoors that is in the closed regions remember our syllabus is divided into many components one component is psychoacoustic how you perceive the sound second component is sound production which we are still doing in theory classes third component is psychoacoustics sorry the third component is propagation of sound how sound propagates itself in the outdoors and in indoors and finally the last component is on noise so this belongs to the component called propagation of sound indoors now whenever a sound source generates some sound indoors the two prominent effect determines how long the sound is going to stay one is reflection there can be different kind of surfaces from which the reflections can happen for example if you have a slanting surface on the source then you can have a diverging reflection and if you have a curved surface then you may get a converging reflection again another kind of curve can give you a diverging reflection while there could be diffused reflection of sound typically the reflection of sound happens from the hard and polished surfaces so remember we are talking in doors so in your room in a auditorium hall etc whichever room whichever closed environment we are looking at the reflection happens because of the presence of hard and polished surfaces example tile normal household tiles glass windows if the windows are closed polished wood etc plaster of pe uh, cement plaster these are all the examples of the hard surfaces and uh, they typically reflect lot of sound effect of reflection is that sound energy does not die quickly it remains in the room so if the source is also there and the reflected sound is also there then there could be some phase delay between the two and because of that the the sound effect changes so for example if you and your friend are having a conversation in a garden you would realize that you need to take a lot of effort for talking but the same if you do in a closed room your talking effort will reduce you will have to apply much less effort 
for talking if you do the same conversation in the inside also there because of the phase delay the sound gets what you call the layman's term is muffled so typically what has been observed is if there is a little bit of reflection perhaps it is preferred because it brings enrichment to the sound but reflections can be too much sometimes and that may kill the and sweetness or enrichment and rather can lead to confusion so the phase delay introduction is important feature the another aspect of propagation of sound indoors is decided by the absorption remember a very hard surface reflects almost all the sound but the very soft surfaces soft curtains carpets open window they all absorb the sound whatever sound falls on them there are certain tiles acoustic tiles which also absorb lot of sound energy open window just imagine you have a source of sound and you have a small open window in the wall inside the room what will happen if the sound falls on the open window so you can think when the sound falls on the open window sound will simply escape through the window and it will go out once the sound goes out it is no longer available in the room therefore we assume that an open window is a perfect absorber of sound although it sounds little odd but remember window is the part of the room but sound that goes out from the window is no longer the part of the room so the open window is a perfect absorber of sound so sound absorption will decays sound energy quickly whatever sound is getting created in the room if there are too many absorbing surfaces then the sound energy will decay quickly human body is a good absorber even human being wear clothes is a good absorber so for example if there are people sitting in the room the sound energy will be absorbed very quickly upholstery sofa chair table covers they all absorb the sound to a good extent and sound energy decays quickly now we can define something called as absorption coefficient which mathematically represent this phenomena of sound absorption or reflection absorption coefficient of a surface is defined as sound energy absorbed let me just make a correction the absorption coefficient is defined as sound energy absorbed upon sound energy incident both per unit area for a given surface so for example a will be equal to 1 if all the sound energy incident 
is absorbed a will be oh, like open window or an acoustic tiles so for an open window as i said all the sound energy that is incident upon the open window it just goes out so if you take open window as a surface then we will say that this surface absorbs all the sound artificial acoustic tiles remember open window allows lot of external noise also to come inside mm. typically we avoid that by using specially designed acoustic tiles a0 for concrete floor polished wood etc so concrete flooring or a polished wood sanmica television screen which is glass polished glass these are all absorb very little sound so that is for them coefficient of absorption is approximately equal to 0 here in this image you can see that a studio is being set up this is a mic this is a diffuser you can see that on the walls what are placed are acoustic tiles acoustic tiles are placed so that reflections from the wall do not distort the production of sound or recording of sound you cannot have an open window and do it because in an open window lot of external noise comes in so that's how you define your absorption coefficient typically for different materials absorption coefficients are well studied and the charts are available so for example this is a chart which is available for us you can refer to this chart there are different kind of materials here concrete block unpainted painted concrete block glass window plaster typically plaster of paris plaster of lath kind of thing plywood panels drapery curtains and all drapery heavy weight heavy curtains terrazzo floors wooden floors carpet on concrete carpet on pad acoustical tiles in air acoustical tiles on concrete suppose if you have a concrete wall on which you stick acoustical tile their behaviors will change here it is 0.99 for 1000 hertz here it is 0.79 gypsum board typically the fall ceilings and all are created using gypsum board so these are different materials for which you can absorption coefficient is given for different frequencies this is 125 250 500 1000 2000 4000 the experiment that we are going to do in that experiment if you can figure out what frequency you are or what is the dominant frequency of the experiment then you can use the frequency wise data for your calculation if you cannot find it out then you do all your calculation for 500 hertz so going ahead how does sound propagates inside so suppose if i am talking about a small sized or a medium sized auditorium say in our college if you have visited then maybe it is the multimedia room or something like that sometime in our college hall 
if the person is speaking on the stage then the sound reaches to say third or fourth row fifth row people sometimes depending upon the size of the hall in 20 millisecond to 200 millisecond smaller halls will have smaller time larger halls will have larger time and then after this what happens is the prominent reflections are set in and those reflections start reaching after the first prominent reflection the secondary reflection start reaching to the person so here is the diagram that looks like this is the speaker this is the person this is the direct sound that reaches first to the person then the first reflection reaches from the ceiling to the person then multiple reflection like one from behind one from this side also reaches to the person so there are reflections from different directions which reach to this person so that is how the sound energy is going to build up in this room if you create a sound then if the source is continuing the sound then what happens is sound energy grows first initially sound energy will grow so sound pressure or level will grow and when this person stops talking then the sound energy will drop why will it drop it will drop because it will be absorbed on every reflection this is a graph which shows how if an impulsive sound is created then how does it decay so if you have an impulsive sound this is the first impulse that reaches to the person after some time the first reflection reaches to the person and then after subsequent time you will have multiple reflections reaching to the person but remember each reflection will hit the surface and it will get absorbed a little bit the process in which it will be absorbed we have already discussed depending upon what kind of materials are used on the wall and the floor slowly it will start dropping down sound energy in a room depends on following parameters one is the power of the source if the per second sound produ production is very high sound energy production then sound energy would there persist in a very strong manner volume of the room if it's a large wall large room typically it can accommodate large amount of sound energy smaller rooms will have smaller or lesser amount of sound energy thirdly the presence of sound absorbing surfaces if the sound absorbing surfaces are there in good amount then sound will be absorbed and the sound energy in the room will drop if the sound absorbing surfaces are less then the sound energy in the room will persist that's how the sound energy level in a room is judged if it's a too big a room there could be lot of sound energy and with very little absorbing surface sound can stay much longer and it results in a very muffled sound nothing will be clear it will not come clear i have a small video of a person singing in a large room which has surface of stones you can hear 
and figure out if you can understand anything. So I, I repeat this if once again. Person is sitting on the the person is sitting on the door, small door in a very large room. You can see it is largely stones and empty. Person is trying to sing, but you can see that the words are not very clear. It, this room has a particularly long reverberation. Sound energy stays for a long time. Nothing is clear. By the way, he is your favorite professor. You can figure out who. So yeah, we can define now reverberation. Reverberation time is the time for the sound intensity level to decay by 60 dB from its peak value after all the sound sources are cut off. So that's how you define the reverberation time. It is the sound intensity level to decay by 60 dB from its peak value. Remember we don't have to always say that all the sound sources are cut off. Remember if the sound sources are not cut off then the peak value the sound will remain on its peak. Typically in a room once the sound sources start sound energy will starts building up reaches to its peak and stays there if the sound sources are playing it will not drop. Once the sources are off, then only the drop begins. So when we say that the reverberation time is the time for the sound intensity level to decay by 60 dB from its peak value, it means that the sound sources are cut off, otherwise it is not possible. Therefore the reverberation time in the room depends on, obviously it will not depend on the source power because the measurement begins after the source has turned off. It depends upon the volume of the room, presence of sound absorbing surfaces. So the reverberation time is given by this formula. Reverberation time RT is 0.161 V by A. I will explain the terms. Here this formula is written in this form in SI units that is volume is in meter cube and A is in meter square. If you change the units then the coefficient value will be different. So you have to be careful. For example you can use feet. There are many people who use foot or feet to measure the dimensions. This figure will change. You can figure it out from the references. But my suggestion is that we will stick to SI units. So this is our formula to go. This is called Sabine's formula. And uh, if you are mathematically interested you can look into it. It's a very fantastic derivation. We are not getting into that. What is A here? That is important. So for a surface having surface area S, exposed surface area S, I would say. The surface area which is exposed to air, which is exposed to sound. And the absorption coefficient A, capital A is defined as surface area into small a or surface area 
एक्चुअल सरफेस एरिया इन टू इट्स कोफिशियंट ऑफ एब्जॉर्बशन सो यू कैन सी दैट ए इज नथिंग बट द रेशियो इज नथिंग बट द एरिया विथ इज एब्जॉर्बशन प्रॉपर्टी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यूर वन मीटर स्क्वायर एंड इफ इट एब्जॉर्ब ऑल द एरिया if it has a coefficient of absorption 1 then a is 1 but if the same area if its coefficient of absorption is 0.5 capital a is 0.5 so you can see that it is going to vary example is a classic example is an open window or a closed window if it's a closed window then a is surface area into into multiplied by the coefficient of absorption of the material of the window the material of the window is material the material of the window if it is wood then you take the coefficient of absorption of wood multiply that to its actual area that will give you a but if the same window is open then coefficient of absorption is 1 and therefore actual area is a So that's how you have to evaluate a remember that small a does not have any unit therefore unit of s which is meter square goes to capital a so you can now see that volume is meter cube a is meter square so this ratio must have a dimensions of meter now reverberation time has the dimensions of second therefore this constant 0.161 must have a dimension of second per meter so that meter will cancel second will remain so this is the formula that we have to go if you have large number of surfaces in a room large number of different types of surfaces then a is evaluated by the sum of the products of each surface area and its coefficient of absorption so suppose if you have a wood panel and the ceiling in your room which is say concrete then for them areas are different s1 s2 their coefficient of absorptions are different a1 a2 you have to use them add them all to get your net a value so how does our experiment go from this point we have i have explained you the theory part experimental part is very simple to find the reverberation time of a large room so get into the largest possible room that you have an access to so now in mumbai you know that homes are small and we are doing most of the experiments at home but still if you have rooms which is little largest or if your neighbor's room is little large just request it or her get into the largest possible room if you have you have access to please don't worry about how large is large whatever largest possible it is for you do the experiment for that room in our lab people have done or people have calculated the reverberation time of even a box of 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter so it is possible even in relatively small rooms to calculate reverberation time or rt so don't worry but yeah do go for a whatever largest possible room you have an access to open or remove curtains curtains are typically little challenging to calculate the area unless and until they are well stretched out so either you open them like fold them on one side and wrap them and keep it on away or better remove them keep the doors closed close windows also so we are going to do in two parts first part windows closed 
second part windows open and we are going to see an impact start audacity sound recorder you are already familiar with the app you are already familiar with the recorder press the record button create a loud impulsive sound it should be loud enough you can clap suppose i clap like this so that is possible if you want can make it little more louder it would be even better you can take two wooden blocks strike against each other something anything which is similar short and impulsive sound you have to create allow it to decay completely once you are observant enough you will find that the sound is decaying audacity will record it because the recorder is already on take four more readings similarly so in the same room at the same moment you go for four more readings so total you have to take five readings then you open all the windows so the only change that you have to bring into the room is open all the windows you just open all the windows and repeat the experiment for five similar readings so again create five instances of impulsive sound let them decay let audacity record all of them measure length width and height of the room this could be little challenging and maybe little error prone perhaps if you use a very small ruler if you use a if you have a foot rule try to use that if you have say a measuring tape tailor's tape etc you can use that if you are bringing into any kind of error just be remain cautious of it and maybe you can record if you wish to note down the materials used in the making of open wall floors and ceiling so in the same room you sit down with your pen and paper and for this you don't have to keep the doors and open windows open or closed you can let room be normal let people go and come in you don't have to disturb for the, all these parts except for the readings part where you can request people to leave the room so open walls and note down the materials used so look at the ground look at the floor if it's a uh, tiles then write down the tiles if it's a complete carpet write down carpet if it is on the tiled surface if it's a small carpet then you'll have to figure out how much is the area of the tiled surface and how much is the area of the carpet that you have to separately measure so be careful area is length into breadth reminding you measure the size of the windows remember the windows are going to bring huge impact so find the length find the breadth i'll give you the table where you can write observe carefully in the room and note the presence of any other sound absorbing material like bed sheets table cloth cover curtains if any upholstery sofa cover chair cushion covers glass then note down all these materials and with your measuring tape find the length and breadth of each material and therefore its area so you have to do that calculation also figure out if there are any other materials like tv these just tv surfaces are large and they are generally glass so they reflect wooden paneling etc if there are small objects maybe you can ignore them or maybe if you are hard working enough i assume all of you are hard working if you are hard working enough then you can take them also in consideration 
but remember if you have to measure area which is exposed to the air or to the sound you don't have to measure the hidden areas so for example if in one wall there is half the wall is a cupboard then wall area part of the wall area which is behind the cupboard can be ignored but the cupboard surface area has to be taken into consideration so be careful so this is actually a bigger task taking the reading for the sound part is very quick in fact this takes a longer time to measure to make a list of all the absorbing all different kind of surfaces in the room and figuring out their length breadth so that you can find out their areas now we will calculate the reverberation time first by observation yes nimeshka you can create sound at the center of the room remember in small rooms at our home it will not matter much where you create sound because sound travels fairly fast and very quickly it will spread out but on a safer side you can create it at the center so now we will look into the measurement or reverberation time first by observation typically this is how it looks like in audacity i will go to audacity and show it to you but this is you can see this part the sound is building up and this is the maximum peak value and then the decay begins so let me take a break from the presentation and go to audacity now this is the sound recording which is there in the same large hall in which the person i had shown was singing since i was also there present i created some loud sound with mouth and tried to figure out how does it decay now in this process it was not very impulsive sound but nevertheless useful because the room particularly has a large reverberation time so just hear the sound i will show it once again so once you have recorded your sound you can this is how it will look its waveform will look like you first look at this scale here and make a right click the moment you do a right click you will get a lot of options here so generally if you are doing it will show you a linear scale all we have to do is we have to convert this into a db scale decibel scale if you want you can try some zoom thing you can see that it gives you half part only one second no where is it gone vanished 
fair enough we can record a new sound so that one example you saw i will show you another example by clapping So you can see that there are three examples I'm showing. My present room will not have that much of reverberation time and even the pickup is fast. So how do we measure the time here? So first of all you convert this into a decibel scale. So you can see that this is 0 and this is minus 60. So you have to figure out the time in which the sound intensity drops from the maximum to by 6 maximum from the maximum by 60 db that is from maximum till here so you will find that here the build up time is very little can you see here it's increasing this is if you stretch it out you will find that the, this is the part in which the sound intensity is increasing so you have to ignore this increasing sound intensity part. Your, your observations will begin here. The moment you, you click here, you will get a line and that is reflected at the bottom here. Start 0.5, sorry, 05.683 second. So that you can note down this time, starting time. And you get a finger using which you can go and select. Remember, I have to go to the next extent that it drops by 60 dB so till it reaches to a minimum, say somewhere here. So that minimum you can figure it out. This is again on the basis of the judgment and can induce error that is why we are taking five readings and figuring out a mean so here on this side you have to find out when it is on the maximum and here on this side when it is on the minimum so on the right hand side the clip timing is mentioned here 0. Point, sorry 0. 06.233 so you note down the left hand side clip timing, starting clip timing and you note down the right hand side clip timing 6.233 this clip timing. So you note down the starting and the end. The difference of the two will give you the reverberation time. So I can go to my powerpoint once again. So if it's a closed window I can write my observations this manner starting time t1 remember this is I have written for the earlier clip which I had make you here 9.478 end time is 12.853 and the reverberation time is 3.375 so it has a rather high reverberation time that room as I had said so you take five readings for all five readings you figure out the starting time ending time each case calculate the reverberation time by subtracting the starting time time from ending time so this will give you five different values you find the average of the two and you get your final answer so this is when the windows are open you have also made the recording of windows when the windows are closed so you repeat the same observation table for the wait this is for the closed window and you repeat the same observation table for the open window then you go by calculation reverberation time by calculation that is more laborious and more hard work is involved length of the room width of the room height of the room would be needed any which way to calculate the volume of the room 
then you write down the name of the exposed surfaces so you can write side wall 1 side wall 2 ceiling floor but remember only that part which is exposed so for example if there is a sofa which is kept in contact with the surface then you have to ignore that part of the surface because or that part of the floor because it is not in touch it is not exposed so figure out only the exposed surface exposed to air window also note down that it is closed or open use that find out its length and breadth find out its area if it's a rectangular surface area is length into breadth if there is any other shape you do figure out what could be the area that i leave to you go to the observation tape go to the table that i had provided previously from there for that particular surface you note down the coefficient of absorption here just figure it out there could be materials or surfaces at your home which might not be covered in the table in that case you take the nearest possible resemblance okay one important thing i would like to tell you and that is this that when you are noting down the coefficient of absorption do also note what is the dominant frequency in your sound so for that you know what to do you go to audacity and perhaps you do it just once because your impulsive sound sample is once select a part of the sound analyze it by using plot spectrum so you if you look at this clapping sound it has a peak at around 1000 hertz so once you realize that it has a peak at around 1000 hertz then use the 1000 hertz column data okay so your impulsive sound you are creating similar type of impulsive sound so from spectrum analysis figure out what is the dominant frequency remember it will have many frequencies but we are looking at only the dominant ones so find out the dominant frequency now just to tell you the reverberation time fluctuates with the frequency so more detailed calculation of reverberation time use signal generator to create a strong impulse of sound so if you can do some referencing and use that perhaps it will be better but even if you don't do that and do it by clapping then stick to the principle that figure out which is the most dominant frequency if it is around 1000 hertz you say if it is 400 hertz then you take the data for 500 hertz so on and so forth so your coefficient of absorption data has to be taken has to be chosen wisely wait the coefficient of absorption data after you choose you multiply the surface area and coefficient of absorption that will give you SIAI for all the surfaces remember you can add more rows to this table this is just a suggestive list then you can calculate the reverberation time T1 prime I'm using prime for calculation 0.161 V by A A is now given by sum of the last columns in the previous table S1 A1 plus S2 A2 dot 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 so calculate your reverberation time for windows closed since windows are closed check the material of the window if it is glass then use the coefficient of absorption for glass if it is wood use the coefficient of absorption for wood if it is anything else do figure it out if windows are open 
again you have to do the same calculation but the area which will use for open window the coefficient of absorption is 1 do remember it's a perfect absorber so do that this is one simple problem I'm just throwing from the reference book for to calculate reverberation time how do normally calculations are done 20 15 8 meter length breadth height width and height you calculate the volume figure out what materials are there concrete block ceiling plaster floor carpet so whatever kind of material you are using find the ceiling area find the floor area and then carpet you can calculate all these by multiplying by by multiplying suitably by their coefficient of absorption so wall area into coefficient of absorption ceiling area into coefficient of absorption carpet area into coefficient of absorption that will give you these a1 a2 a3 you can add all of them for the denominator calculate volume for the numerator then you calculate reverberation time as v by a and that will give you 4.1 second in this example this is how you have to do calculations at your home so results are straightforward you have to write the reverberation time by observation that is from audacity and by calculation both when windows are closed and windows are open we hoping that windows open and closed will bring large change in the reverberation time although it may not happen if windows are too small find for what purpose the room is most suitable like speech or music use internet for resources on this explain if there is a discrepancy in the observed and calculate, calculated results so if they differ by huge amount please try to figure out that what might be the reason list those reasons in your experiment please make the image of the room with you taking the measurement as the part of the submission so as usual all the home experiments you have to click yourself using doing the measurement submit that image along with others as the part of the submissions for the experiment so that's how this entire experiment will go i will quickly revise reverberation time is the time that sound takes to decay in a room by 60 db from its peak value we are measuring or calculating the reverberation time by two ways one by observation in audacity you will record large impulsive sound sound will die away sound will die away you find out how much time will it take to die in audacity five readings find out the mean do it for open window and closed window then find out the area of different parts of the room length and breadth height of the room find out the volume find out the denominator a by multiplying the area of each component with, with its coefficient of absorption and calculate the reverberation time and see your calculation if it matches with your observations or not if they are matching it's good if they are not matching then figure out what could be the reason why they are not matching list them so with this we stop these sets of instructions we can stop here on youtube live we will meet in the google meet